Hey there, and welcome to another Ask Me Anything session. I have been collecting all of your comments on my original community posts, as well as my previous Ask Me Anything sessions. And can I just say thank you so much for submitting all these amazing questions. And I'm going to try to get through as many as I can and give you hopefully helpful brief answers so that everyone can learn more about the publishing industry and the craft of writing a book. I also want to mention that in the description below, I have a link to download my free story self-assessment. So if you do have a current work in progress and you're not really sure what it's doing well or what you need to improve, I really recommend downloading that and filling out the worksheet. I created it specifically with the intention of helping you identify your areas for improvement so that you can take your story to the next level. I know how hard it can be to do on your own, so I hope the worksheet helps you out. It's also going to sign you up for my newsletter that is going to launch soon with exclusive tips and resources. So now let's dive into some more questions. Stephen King has talked about his writing practices publicly and how he is able to get many books out onto the market. Are there any ways you have seen that are helpful to increase your writing output? It doesn't matter what step of the process. This is a great question. Two things come to mind immediately. Number one is setting up writing sprints. So I know that many writers find this method really, really helpful. There's also a community aspect to it and an accountability aspect. So I know there's many author tubers who do it on YouTube live. They set up sessions and say, you know, we're going to write for an hour or two hours or, or whatever it's going to be. And you're all doing it together. It seems that that is a way that many people are able to find that focus and able to carve out that time to write. But another way, if that doesn't quite work for your process, I think is just to hold yourself accountable and bake it into your schedule, whatever that looks like. I know writing is probably extremely tough to fit into a day that is already jam packed with other responsibilities, but maybe it takes putting a notice on your calendar, you know, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. if you're a morning person or 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. if you're a night person where this is the time you're going to write. You can make yourself your favorite beverage, maybe a nice tea that you look forward to and you only have it whenever you're sitting down to write. I think that a lot of writers find those little incentives really, really helpful. I mean, I do the same when I'm sitting down to edit. So that could be a method that I've seen people, particularly on book talk and author tube using a lot. Okay, next question is, do you need to copyright your manuscript before sending it to beta readers? I would say no. I understand where a lot of concern about copywriting comes from, but it is not really standard to certify officially any copyright before you're actually at the point of publication, whether that is traditional publishing or self-publishing or hybrid publishing. I know it can be really nerve wracking to send your work to someone and you don't want them to steal it. Of course, I know writers have the same anxiety when it comes to sending your manuscript to literary agents. But my advice here is if you don't trust that person, that beta reader, or if that literary agent doesn't seem reputable and you're concerned about this person potentially stealing your work, maybe rethink sending it to them at all. You should only be sharing your work in the case of beta readers with someone who you really trust. Usually it's a case where you're exchanging manuscripts. So hopefully that helps alleviate some concerns that they might steal your work because they're also giving you their work. When it comes to literary agents, you should make sure that that agent has a track record in the industry, has a real verified online presence, and that should alleviate concerns that they are not an actual publishing professional and that they would do something criminal with your work. Okay, next question here is, Tips for those who write both novels and screenplays. This is a good one. What comes to mind for me is dialogue. Of course, screenplays have specific formatting that doesn't quite work for the novel format. For instance, if you think technically about dialogue tags versus just having the name of the character and what they say. You wanna make sure that your dialogue in a novel doesn't feel stilted or overwhelming. And the way to do that is to break up your dialogue exchanges with dialogue tags, which are necessary for us to track who is saying what, as well as potentially internal thoughts. If you are writing in first person or close third person or actions by the characters. 
So, you know, during a conversation, they stand up and they do something or, you know, they hear something that helps us picture the surrounding scene that can sometimes, I think, be lost with writers who are focused on screenplays where you don't have to focus on painting the room for the reader in the way that you have to focus on in a novel. Okay, next one is what exactly do ghostwriters do and why would you have one? You typically hire a ghostwriter if you want to write a nonfiction work, especially a memoir, but you don't quite feel confident enough in your writing abilities to do that yourself. So many memoirs by celebrities are actually ghostwritten. And what will happen is the ghostwriter will have very intensive sessions with the celebrity to learn all of the elements of their story. And then the ghostwriter will draft it and obviously work with the celebrity to fine tune it as it goes on. It's a very, very intense process. But basically the ghostwriter is taking on the role of actually putting pen to page and crafting the story word by word while the person who hired the ghostwriter is giving them the overarching narrative, the anecdotes they want to include and things like that. You don't really see ghostwriters for novels or works of fiction. It really is common in the nonfiction arena. Okay, next question here is, how is the market for poetry books? When it comes to poetry, I typically recommend first trying to publish a single poem or maybe a short collection of poems in literary journals or literary magazines because that tends to be a more viable path for publication than putting together a whole collection of poetry. Of course, there are poetry collections published every year, but the amount and volume is so much smaller than the market for novels and nonfiction books. So I do typically recommend going the literary journal or literary magazine route for poets, especially if you are just getting started and maybe don't have a lot of publications under your belt already. If you are more established or once you get more established, then you could consider reaching out to literary agents who represent poetry and getting their thoughts on if your collection is viable in terms of the publishing landscape. Okay, the next question here is, I have a question regarding query strategy because we only have one shot at each agent. Should I right away query my top choices or favorite agents or should I save the best for later? I love this question because I love talking about querying strategy and I feel like I get into a lot of nitty gritty tips and I feel like this question is getting to like very deep strategy and strategic thinking, which I really appreciate. And it's making me think a little bit about my advice, which I also really appreciate. I think where I've landed is that I would potentially wait for your top, top agents. And the reason is if you send out a batch of say 12 queries and they're all rejections, and you maybe want to make some changes to your query letter or to your sample pages in line with some of the feedback that you got from agents if you got personalized rejections, then that allows you to present a stronger version of your materials to your top agents that you can put into your second batch. Also, what if the flip side happens and you receive a request to send the full manuscript to one of the agents in your first batch then you can kind of take that as a sign that maybe you do have something that agents are interested in here. And then you can go ahead and query the dream agents on your list and see if they respond positively as well. So I don't really see any downside to waiting until batch two or three for your dream agents. Okay, the last question here is one about my dog. Um, what an awesome dog, thank you. And golden doodle question mark, yes. He is a golden doodle, 75% poodle and 25% golden retriever. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this Ask Me Anything session. Continue to leave me questions in the comments and I will be sure to cycle through them as many as I can. And as I referenced, go ahead and hit that link in the description to download my free story self-assessment. And as always, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me know that you're finding my content useful and allows me to continue growing this amazing community. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.